Discover Meteor Book Launch Party. Uh, we have some unfilled seats up in front, so if you guys want to come front and uh, and grab some of those seats, that way it'll be a little bit less crowded back there. Um, and uh, and Matt, and first, uh, before we introduce the authors, uh, a couple words from Matt, one of the founders of Meteor. Uh, check this out. <laughs> no, that's not the elegance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for coming. My name is Matt. I'm one of the uh, original authors of Meteor. Uh, this is a super exciting night for us, and I'm so glad you're all here uh, to share it with us. We, we spend most of our day writing code. Um, I guess we spend most of the night writing code, too. But Meteor is a lot more than a repository of software. And, you know, if anything, I think it's about people. Um, there's thousands of people all across the world who are part of the Meteor community. It's incredibly special to us. It's the thing we think about day and night, trying to create something um, that uh, is equal to the task of changing the way people think about writing software and think about building applications. And so I think it's really fitting that uh, the two people we have here tonight, Sasha and Tom, uh, are from Japan and Australia, respectively. Uh, this is a, a global community of people who've come together. Um, Sacha, I was introduced to. Sean's here somewhere. Sean, ra raise your hand. This all started with an email from Sean uh, telling me about this guy who wanted to build a website and he thought maybe Meteor would be a good idea. And Sacha didn't think so at first, but um, we got to know each other and Sasha went on to write a uh, telescope, which some of you may have seen, and um, a project called Sidebar.io, which is a curated uh, community of designers and links being passed around that he built in Meteor, um, essentially on his own. Uh, great story for what's possible with someone who's familiar with the web but hasn't done a lot of web programming. Um, if you haven't seen it, he's, he's written a lot and he's said a lot about his experience building a Meteor that uh, I encourage everyone to take a look at. Tom, um, <laughs> when we launched Meteor about a year ago, we, we had a number of curious omissions from the project, uh, one of which was any way to include third-party packages whatsoever. <laughs> and a lot of people rolled their eyes, a lot of people laughed at us, a lot of people thought we were stupid. Tom simply implemented the missing pieces. So Tom is one of the co-authors of uh, Meteorite, which is a wrapper around Meteor that enabled third-party packages, and Atmosphere, which is a website where anyone can create a third-party package and upload it for use in the community. So one of the technical leaders from day one in the community, um, they met through the community, they've come together to write what I think is a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal book. Um, I think it's some of the best writing I've seen on programming in general, certainly for Meteor. So it's my pleasure to introduce Sachin and Tom to tell us about their story and discover Meteor. Well, thanks very much, Matt. I, I feel like at this point, especially as he's in the room, it sh I should make mention that it was actually Mike that started the Meteorite project. Mike Bannister, if you want to... Put your hand up, where are you? There oh, it is. <laughs> so, I simply piggybacked on Mike's efforts and, uh, yeah, we took it forward together, so. Thanks, Mike. I'm getting credit for your work now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, just to begin with, we'd like to just tell you a little bit about the story of how we came to write the book. Um, and I guess it starts with Sasha, I don't know if you want yeah. So uh, basically it all started because I really like Hacker News and uh, there wasn't anything like Hacker News for design. So I had this idea of creating Hacker News for designers and I started looking into like existing open source apps, or Rails apps, or Python apps, but none of them were really doing what I wanted to do. So, so then I started looking into ways I could program it myself. And uh, yeah, like Matt said, uh, my friend Sean introduced me to Meteor and said, it's pretty cool, you should check it out. And I started coding with it and, you know, it was like, it was pretty easy to get going and unlike other frameworks, they, they were, things were not always easy to do, but there was no huge stumbling block for me. So little by little, I kept going and I decided to open source the code uh, in the hopes that people who really knew what they were doing, unlike me, 
might uh, be able to help me with the project. So this project became a telescope, and that's how I met Tom, I guess. I just asked him for help so much on uh, <laughs> our IRC that we got to know each other. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can show you telescope real quick. So uh, this is the telescope homepage. And the actual app looks like this. So uh, if you're familiar with sites like Reddit or Hacker News, it's basically the same uh, principle. You can vote on posts. Uh, you can leave comments, and so it's open source and entirely built with Meteor. And of course the uh, difference between Telescope and Hacker News is that Telescope is real time, um, which we've only really seen once when it uh, was on Hacker News and got near the top and all of a sudden a lot of people were using the demo app because we have a whole lot of features in Telescope that revolve around real time stuff, post change order, comments, queue in. I've only seen it happen once because there's no, there's no like Sasha has his site sidebar that's built on Telescope, but it doesn't have commenting. So yeah, we've no, you don't, you can't actually see it live. You, it's an interesting thing about media apps is sometimes you actually need a lot of people to use them to see how they actually behave. But anyway, seven, seven and eight just changed orders. Oh, oh, somebody yeah. voted. <laughs> Maybe people are voting. There late. you go. Right. Where's, um, where's the dot the? I'm sorry. The oh, domain is Peru. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the O is the dot. The O is the dot, yeah, that was a good trick. Um, so Sasha, um, just to continue the story, Sasha eventually uh, asked me enough questions that uh, he convinced me to help him out a little bit on, on Telescope. And I guess <clears throat> essentially after reaching the sort of stable, sort of semi complete first version that we were, where we were happy with the basic features, we realized that we'd learned quite a few patterns and techniques about Meteor and we were answering, in telling people about Telescope and helping people with questions, we were often answering the same kind of questions um, a lot of the time. So it became natural uh, to conclude that perhaps we should write some of this down and people might be interested in reading it. So that's the genesis of the book really. Yeah, and we started working on it really in January. Uh, first working on the, on the blog and trying to see which questions people had. And yeah, we got going and started writing the book. I think it's been about yeah, a couple months of work. But uh, we're very happy to, to release it today and see so many people. So uh, today we're just going to quickly run through the chapters of the book and just uh, show you what you can expect to find. Oh, before that, um, I just want to give a shout out to one of our friends, uh, Andrew Wilcox. So uh, he's the guy behind the Meteor App Cache uh, package, which uh, caches the uh, Meteor App's static data. And now he's uh, working on this, which uh, is a package that would cache the actual data, the collections of data uh, of your app. And he's, uh, he has a fundraiser. He's looking for uh, some funds to finance the development. So. Uh, I think he's doing really good work, and if, if you can help him, then uh, go take a look. So the URL is offline-data.meteor.com. All right, so um, let's just quickly take a look at the book so you guys can know what to expect if you do want to get it. The sure. basic uh, concept of the book is we're going we're uh, to walk through building an application which is much like Telescope. Telescope itself has a few hairy roots and corners. It's kind of, it's kind of complicated in points where, in ways that aren't really meteor specific. Um, so we initially we're going to just walk through the code of Telescope, but then we decided that we would build a simpler app, which encapsulated all of the important concepts from Telescope and the ones that really emphasise meteor features. So. The project that you'll build if you, if you follow the book is called Microscope. Uh, <laughs> it's a small telescope. We're sort of trying to think of a, a, like look up names for small telescopes, but yeah, that probably would have been lost on most people. So. <laughs> um, so Microscope works in many ways the same. This is the completed app that you'll get, have at the end of the book. It works in many ways the same way as Telescope. We have animations of post changing order. You can comment on posts. Um, 
you can vote on posts, obviously. Uh, you can submit them, you can edit them, you get notifications. And uh, we'll just quickly walk through the chapters of the book now and explain how they relate to the Microscope app and what you can expect to learn from them. So this shouldn't take too long as we go through. Um, so we start with an introduction to media. I mean, <laughs> as you might expect, we explain kind of the concepts of reactivity and collections and real time in general um, and why you might want to use it. Um, then we talk you through building, getting started, building the app. This is In installing a Meteor a Meteorite. Installing Meteorite, which we use to build this app. Um, then, oh, and so one concept with the book which is important is that there are the mainline chapters which are essentially just building the app um, and are very, I mean, are going to be very useful, especially if you haven't yet gone beyond just looking through the docs and, and looking through the example apps and we explain a justification of why we did things in the way that we have. But for the more experienced user, the sidebar chapters which are uh, numbered with uh, dot five. Are going to be more useful. Yeah. Um, they're where we kind of digress and talk about stuff that isn't necessarily relevant to the app, but has come up as we have built the app. So for instance, the first sidebar is just basically talking about how you might deploy it, a couple of different options that you have, Meteor.com, Heroku, or EC2. Um, so that might be useful. Then we sort of get started building the app. The first thing that we do is just build up templates and talk about handlebars and how Meteor integrates with handlebars, how you write helpers in Meteor, how you organize, how we uh, suggest you organize code into different files and template managers, as we call them, which are collections of helpers, event handlers, and lifecycle life cycle callbacks. So one thing we should also talk about is um, the commits here. Yes. So every time um, for each commit of the code, we have a link to the code on GitHub, which is tagged so that you land right on the, this commit. And what's really cool is we also have a, a link to a live instance of the app at this point in the book. So you can compare uh, what you have locally on your uh, own machine with what it should, should look like. Right. At this so, point. so you essentially have three, yeah. three options if you're following along the book. One, if you're really lazy, you can just directly go to the URL and see what we're talking about. Secondly, if you're a little bit lazy, you can just check out git commits and run the app locally. And thirdly, if you really want to learn, you can type things in yourself, which I, I would suggest. <laughs> uh, the next chapter deals with collections, which are Meteor's core feature, really. Um, in the way that data is synchronized between client and server. And the main collection in this app is the post collection, which is the list on the front page. Um, then we digress a little bit, talk about publications and subscriptions, which is how you control that synchronization between client and server. And we've got pictures too. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully the pictures will help visual learners amongst you visualize how subscriptions and publications work which can be confusing because it's a new concept. Um, then we touch on routing, which is close to my heart, as some of you would know. So routing is obviously important when you have more than one page in your app. Uh, we digress to talk a little bit about the session, which is, as you probably know, how you store the state of your app and how you maintain it across uh, code changes, code, relo code reloads. Uh, an introduction to the user system and the account system and how basically telling you how easy it is to integrate and uh, some of the implications from a security perspective of using it. Uh, we digress to talk a little bit about reactivity and what that means and how template rendering um, responds to changes in the underlying data and what exactly is happening behind the scenes. So I just want to say that like I've built a telescope, and so I've been using Meteor for a while, but uh, I still learned a lot just because, uh, you know, it's easy to, to use Meteor, but sometimes you don't really have a, a good grasp of the underlying concepts. And I, I thought that this chapter in, in particular was very useful for that, like 
to really let you understand on an intellectual level what's going on. So yeah, I mean, the thing about Meteor is that there's some really amazing magic that happens, and often you don't have to think about things. Um, the problem with magic is, is, of course, obscures things, and sometimes it's good to know what's actually going on behind the curtain. Um, then we talk through creating posts, which is some simple form, submissions, uh, we discuss methods and how you use Meteor methods to control the data that's entering your database. Um, we digress here to talk about latency compensation, which is an important feature of Meteor methods, which I'm sure a lot of you, most of you are aware of. Just simply how methods, which is code that runs on the server, are simulated in the browser so that the user gets the best possible experience. We talk about some of the complexities involved in, in dealing with latency compensation. We touch on editing posts, uh, which, which leads us into allow and deny. So rather than using a method to edit posts, we can just directly call insert, uh, update and remove on the database. Um, and we talk about how allow and deny basically sidestep the need to write methods in simpler cases. Um, then we build out a little feature which is um, an error, an error module. Uh, so if you try to, for instance, submit a URL that's already been submitted to the site, it will pop up a little message. It's sort of a similar pattern to uh, Rails's Flash, except that it's uh, reactive. And uh, we, we build through this pattern, which is, which is very useful for us, and then it leads us into the next chapter where we create a package out of it and show you how to create a simple Meteorite package, um, which is something I encourage you guys all to do with your code that I can reuse, please. <laughs> and publish it on Atmosphere. Um, then we add comments to the site. Uh, we talk about how to link comments to posts, uh, whether or not they should be embedded within posts and considerations about when to do that and when not to do that which of course leads us into a, a chapter about denormalization because of course Meteor being built, built on Mongo, there's a little bit of a, a, a bit of a conflict between Meteor and Mongo and Mongo tends to encourage you to embed and Meteor is not quite so sure about that. Um, then we start getting into some more advanced features of the app. Notifications is a little pop-up that appears when someone comments on your post. And this is a real chance to take advantage of real-time Meteor's real-timeness, so in one, one user creates a, a comment and the other sees the notification instantly. They don't have to browse to another page. They don't have to get an email. It just appears on their screen. Um, which, of course, leads us to talk a little bit more about reactivity um, and how that works and how to create reactive data sources in this case. Um, the next topic, which is probably in the telescope app, the most complicated part mm. is pagination um, and dealing with, with the cursors and making sure we know how many posts are loaded, are we done, uh, do we have more posts to load from the server or can we only see 20 posts because we've only asked for 20. Um, in, in microscope, pagination is relatively easy but telescope it's not. <laughs> Then we talk about publications a little more because uh, you can get oh you can get quite tricky with them. <laughs> Sasha's got some work to do. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and we show some tricks that you maybe uh, will open your mind a little bit about the uh, publication and subscription mechanisms, taking it beyond uh, the simple use case, which is good for ninety percent of the time. Um, Next, we add voting to the site uh, and control sorting of our lists. Uh, talk about how to make sure people can't vote more than once or change the vote count on their own posts. Um, finally, we, we go some of the way to implementing the animations that are present in Telescope, um, the reordering of posts that you may have caught, um, making posts animate as they appear. Um, animations is a is a tricky, tricky topic um, in Meteor that I think this chapter will be very valuable to a lot. 
And finally, we have a little vocabulary at the end of the book. So, uh, hopefully and that gives you a good idea of what to expect. If you do want to get the book. And by the way, like this, this book is a Meteor app uh, itself. So, uh, we have some cool features like a table of contents and uh, comments also. So right now we're using a discuss, but eventually we'd like to have a native meter comments, which will be real time. And you know we can do cool things like let you uh, annotate the book and show other people's annotations in real time, show uh, who else is reading the book or this chapter of the book at the same time. So uh, it's actually pretty exciting to have not just a book, but like a whole platform that you can at build the, on. At the moment, I guess it's a, a baby platform. Yeah. <laughs> but it sounds cool to call it a platform. Yeah. Um, um, and we really encourage you to read, uh, if you can, if it's acceptable to you, the book in the website. Because as we all know, media is still very much subject to change. So we'll be keeping, uh, we'll be keeping all our content up to date as quickly as possible. But if you go ahead and download a PDF in a few weeks, some of the code examples might be wrong. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, by all means, do download the video. <laughs> um, yeah, so that takes us to the end of the book. Um, we'll just take a, a moment to thank a few people that have, have really helped us out. So first of all, uh, all our uh, beta readers. Uh, we've had a lot of help and like, a lot of people here have helped us with comments, uh, fixing our typos, uh, all, all that. So we Telling really us our reactive... TV yeah. chapter was crap and, they, and they rewrote. we rewrote all of it and it's much better now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, special thanks uh, to Julianne, Chris, Andrew and Thomas who um, contributed uh, content, either code yeah. or content to the book or some screencasts which um, are part of our premium package. Right, oh, we, we can show you. Um, so, for example, so Chris yeah, has have. prepared some uh, exclusive screencasts for the Chris. For the book. Where is Chris? Yeah. Yeah. So if you get, uh, there's there's a package. So there'll be multiple packages. There'll be one with just the book. But if you want, there's the also book, one. The book and access to the right, code. Right. The deployed versions. Right. And, and the website. So basically everything we've showed you up to now. And then there will be a little bit more expensive package, which also has, uh, I think, four screencasts, two case studies about uh, other Meteor apps, and two interviews. And, and the interviews are with Matt and Avi, so yeah. thanks very much, guys, yeah. for helping us out with that. Also, also, thanks a lot to Jade and Alice for helping organize tonight. Um, I sent Jade an email saying I'm going to be in town when, coincidentally, when we release the book. I'd like to go to a bar somewhere and maybe <laughs> have a drink with a few people, and this is what happens. So. <laughs> she didn't really help me very much. This is what I asked for. But <laughs> no, thanks a lot, guys. And thanks all the media team, because uh, you know, we wouldn't be here without you. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it. If anyone has any questions that they'd like to ask, yeah? Uh, what version of media is the book written against? Oh, the latest version. Hmm. And it will remain... It was 062? 062, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we'll do our best to... When changes happen to Meteor Core. To get I guess the unless they just changed it now. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's coming out in a week or two. Keep pushing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll give us a little bit of warning if there's going to be some API changes. Yeah. How do, you, uh, how do you make the PDF on having the web version? Oh, uh, I can show you, actually. So uh, you go here, and then you do print. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, tr I did try a lot of other me methods with uh, like Calibre and specialized apps, but then I realized that this is what works best. So. <laughs> The, uh, you said you could annotate the book. Is that you were thinking of? Yeah, we were thinking of that. Um, <coughs> not yet, but we want to implement that. Because when, 
like in the process of getting people to review the book, we tried out a couple an annotation tools and they weren't like perfect, but we saw that there was real value in being able to do that, like just select a paragraph and then leave a note even for yourself or for us or for other readers. Is, is, uh, are you thinking like maybe you could make a little publishing platform app out of this. This seems like an interesting thing on its own. I really like what you did to capture the code in each chapter. Yeah. 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 I guess. Oh, and thanks to, uh, thanks to Nick for letting us <laughs> deploy 50 versions, 50 apps to media. So, yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I mean, right now we have tried to really customize it and, and adapt it to what we want to do as much as possible. But if other people have the same needs as us, why not? Yeah. Are you planning to expand comments over time with the new features and other advanced topics? Or is it going to be this kind of content just updated? Um, yeah, I, I think the, the, base, the base promise is that we'll keep this content up to date. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on like new features, when they appear, um, we may just release them as public, publicly available blog posts or whatever. We, if they're directly applicable to the Microscope app, then we may end up writing extra chapters. But we do have a list of a couple of topics that we want to cover yeah. that are not in the books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we could only, I mean, to some degree, it only made sense to cover certain aspects of media because we couldn't think of a way, yeah. you know, to include email, well, we could have. But. That's not a good example. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kind of curious how you divided the labor of writing the book between the two of you. Like whether, you know, like one person specialized in this chapter and another person specialized in a different one or whether um, it was some other way. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what we did. Um, I, I specialized, like I did the chapters about templating, animations, uh, a lot of the, yeah, that kind of stuff. Tom did uh, more about publications, reactivity. Um, and then I, I worked a lot on all like the marketing, the, the, the sites, also the, this app. Yeah. Uh, and Tom did a little bit more on microscope, the code, uh, yeah. all that. So I think it was a pretty natural yeah. fit. Been really busy on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been watching you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I did write the router package, so it's pretty hard for me to not use it in an app. <laughs> I mean, that's probably the simplest reason. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, in my opinion, MediaWrite is something that's worth knowing about. Um, so I wanted to do a chapter on how to write a package, um, and I wanted to let people know how to use MediaWrite. I think we wanted to do a really practical book, right? Yeah. So we wanted people to get a real world uh, education of what Meteor, not just like, here's how you should do it, and in the real world, you should actually use yeah. this and this. Any more questions? Uh, yeah. How do you guys uh, address Meteor specific debugging in the book? Yeah, we don't really cover uh, debugging so much in detail in the book. Because no, we're perfect, we yeah. never have bugs. <laughs> we didn't. Yeah, we didn't really run into any bugs at all in that development process. So we don't have anything to share about that. Um, yeah, that's um, a really interesting topic, and I, I personally would love to know more about it. I probably don't have too much to offer uh, above and beyond sort of the accepted wisdom on and what's been going around the the mountain. No, there are no tests. Uh, there are tests for the package that we write, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, is there anything in the book about stuff like scaling or using a different package from the Uh No. No. I, scaling, we definitely touch on scaling issues, but we don't sort of have a, a scaling section. We'll probably 
either do a screencast or um, write a blog post about that. It's a really important topic. But we have a few things to say about. So how, how, how do people get the book? Can you talk a little bit about oh, right, how this works? Yeah. So starting tomorrow, you'll have uh, this nice landing page online at discovermeteor.com. And uh, we're uh, actually using uh, Gumroad. So uh, you buy the book on Gumroad, and this gives you access to the Meteor app. And so you can sign up for the app. Yeah, yeah. It gives you an account on the app. Yeah, that, that's basically it. And from your account, you can then download the PDF. Uh, EPUB and uh, Kindle are coming soon. And there's some cards floating around if you haven't seen them with mm -hmm. a discount. Oh, did everybody get a card? Yeah. No. You get the book at a discount. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we didn't have we don't have a physical book, so we want, still wanted to give you guys something like. So okay, it's a card, but. <laughs> it's there's some on the, the book. on the check-in table. I guess you just need the code, right? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, uh, the first edition is just the book. So, that's uh, so book, uh, access to the members area, code, and uh, live instances. The full edition is uh, all that plus uh, four screencasts, two case studies, and two interviews. So the interviews are not online uh, just yet because we're still uh, formatting them, but probably by the time you watch all the rest of that, it will be online. <laughs> and then the last package, uh, we're still finalizing the, the extra content that we want to include, but you can pre-order it uh, at a discount. So like we were talking about stuff that we haven't covered, um, probably we would, that's the kind of thing we'll put in the premium package. Mm. Yeah. And when is it going to be there? Uh, <laughs> within a few weeks. Yeah, yeah. Probably within two weeks. Is it possible if you buy one package to upgrade? Yes. And you, you can upgrade at a discount also. With. There's also a company license if anyone. Yeah. Just mm. looking to get a few copies of us. Maybe one more question? <laughs> Just out of curiosity, do you guys actually integrate uh, the so we, we can tell you because then you'll be able to hack our app and get the book for free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll probably do a screencast on uh, the structure of our members area app um, in, this, in the White Dwarf package. Um, well, we'll flash the code up on the screen for a moment, no. <laughs> so you can't steal it. Well, I suppose if you're watching the screencast, you've already bought yeah, it, so, so it's okay. Yeah. Maybe we can reveal our secrets at that point. <laughs> Why don't we right. give them a big hand?